and verse 3 to verse 9 I shared on Monday morning let me just summarize it for you I read from verse 3 to verse 9 it says and Tida were all the flocks gathered and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the sheep and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place and Jacob said unto them my brethren whence be ye and they said of Haran, are we? And he said unto them, Know ye Liban, the son of Nao? And they said, We know him. Verse 6. And he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. Behold, Rachel his daughter cometh with the sheep. And he said, Lo, it is yet high day, neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. What are ye the sheep and go and feed them? And they said, We cannot until all the flocks be gathered together until they roll the stone from the well's mouth. Then we water the sheep. Verse 9. And while he yet spake with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. She kept them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, and yesterday morning i'm just briefing it because you need to follow the 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 you know the flow i told them yesterday morning online that you should stop living your life like an experimental scientist life is too short and i summarized by saying go to those that know the path road that leads to where you desired that is your desired destination now when uh, Jacob got to that point the Bible says he asked the people where are you from they told him where they are from and he said please do you know Liban now if Jacob had not asked them do you know he would have been wandering around they said ah we know Liban the son of now if I has a daughter Rachel she used to bring the sheep to come and drink water from the well and while they were speaking, Rachel came and they said to him, that's Rachel. You know, a lot of uh, uh, experiments that some of us are doing with our time and life is not need needed. Now, and I summarized yesterday by saying, if you are going to get, become great and great very fast, follow those that know the way. And I summarized online by telling the people that see, success journey becomes easier when you walk with those who already know the way success journey will become you and there is nothing you want to become that somebody has not become Do you hear me there's nothing you want to become that somebody has not become you want a glorious marriage somebody already has glorious marriage you want to have a fulfilled destiny somebody already has a fulfilled destiny you want to enjoy your health somebody's already enjoying his health now what do we do in order to have their results let us learn from them that's why i want to encourage every member of this church please read, don't be a reader readers are leaders if there's anything you you desire any destination you desire go look for the books and the materials that will help you to get there on time and see choose your friends among the wise don't choose your friends among those that are still experimenting life. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's, that's the first thing I saw in Jacob in this Genesis 29. He will have been wandering around if not that he asked, please, I'm going to I'm going to Liban. Do you know him? And somebody said, ah, is he Liban? He's one of now. We know him. Do you know that if Jacob had not asked, eh, Rachel would have come to give the sheep's water and they, they, they may even stand side by side and he will know that this is the daughter of the person he's looking for. Life is easier when we learn from those that have gone ahead. Did you get it? That was what I studied where I shared online on Monday. Then on Tuesday, we saw verse 10 to verse 15. Look at it. Let's go to verse 10 to verse 15. Before I show you the one for today. 10 to 15. And it came to pass, when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Liban, his mother's brother and the sheep of the of Liban, his father, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Liban. He 
his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother and that he was Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father. And it came to pass when Liban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house and told, sorry, and he told Liban all the things. And Liban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him. Pay attention to this verse 14. The space of a month. For just one month. But look at verse 15. And Liban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, should thou therefore serve me for nothing? Now look up. He, is, he lived with them for how many months? One month. If you have followed that reading. Why do you think Liban said, Will you serve me for nothing? Which means that for that one month that he was with them, he was doing what? He was working. He was doing something. And I took my second point. Make up your mind not to be anybody's liability. Make up your mind that you will not be anybody's body. Make up your, make yourself a channel of blessing. You know, even some people do say, ah, ah, my uncle has, ma, of India. My uncle has a lot. In fact, I came to my uncle's house, look at sheep, look at cattle, look at everything. They would just go and relax. He was walking to the point that his uncle had to say, after one month of watching him, ah, ah, I won't allow you to be serving me for free. You have to name your price. Make up your mind that you will be a blessing. Can I tell you this too? That gateway to favor is when you make up your mind to be a blessing. If somebody asks you, what is the gateway for favor? Make up your mind that anywhere you enter, you will not be a liability to anyone. Whether you went to, you maybe you went to, to manage in somebody's house, maybe your family member's house, you are working anywhere, don't wait for them to tell you what to do. Make up your mind that you will be a blessing. Now I don't say which means that he had been rendering service throughout one month. He was, that he was in Liban's house. He had been rendering service. If it were to be to some people today, with the level of prosperity they saw, what will they do? They will just relax and begin to enjoy. Such people have what we call ownership mentality. It belongs to my daddy, it belongs to my uncle, it belongs to my brother, it belongs to my sister. Make up your mind. Anywhere you enter that you will be a plus. If you make it as a character, I'm telling you, you see that doors will be opening for you. Anywhere you enter, you will see doors opening for you. I just want to read what I wrote. I call it, sorry, I call it the, I mean, yes, the, uh, okay, belongs to my own mentality. Now, until you make up your up yourself, no, nobody will, until you make up yourself, make up your mind to be a blessing, nobody will put a price tag on you. We said to my okay, what can we do for him? If you are not a blessing, don't just be sitting down and just folding your hands and believe that people should just be doing things for you. No, make up your mind to be a blessing. That's the second thing I saw about Jacob. Then the third one that I shared this morning is in verse 16 to verse 20. Let's look at it. Verse 16 to verse 20. Verse 16 to verse And Liban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah. And the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Liban said, It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. Look at verse 20. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. Verse 21. And Jacob said unto Liban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go into her. Now, what's the thought that I shared online this morning? Before I go to that of today, develop it as a habit to avoid free things. Don't like any I will tell you why. You know what uh, 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 Aliba said? He said, I have two daughters, pick one. Ah, Jacob said, Do I love Rachel? But let me serve you for seven years as bride price so that I can have her. You know, if it is people that love free, free things, confirm, confirm, and shake you. Uncle, uncle, sir, I love Rachel. 
and I went to the jail. He wouldn't have been denied. But see, can I tell you this too? I wrote this down. I wrote this down. Praise the Lord. I didn't hear you. Praise the Lord. I said, yeah, don't develop the love for free things. Because if you do, it will kill your creative instincts, one, and turn you to a dependent. Now, if you love free things, it will not allow you to be creative. Uh, and I want to say, and it makes them independent. What's independent? Independent always want to rely on people. I was the parasite. Wash the baby, eh, 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 no good thing comes without a price. If you see anything that is good, there is a price tag on it. But if you see anything that is free, it wants to destroy you. Somebody was sharing with me eh, 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 during the presidential rally. Eh, our pres the pre present president, he was president that time. You know, he was a uh, presidential candidate that time. He came to Jogo Center. And this one of our women was telling me that, sir, they, they invited us to come. Please don't say the They invited us to come to Jogo and the man gave us 400,000 naira. And I said, out of the 400,000, how much reached you? He said, well, then they did the sharing and sharing and sharing. Eventually, she got 1,000 naira. How many hours was the political meeting? He said, they spent three hours at the political meeting. Praise the Lord. Now, three hours and they gained how much? 1,000. Now imagine <laughs> we have how many three hours in one day? We have how many? Eight, eight three hours. Imagine for a whole a whole three hours. And you know why? Something free. How much do you think they give to those mamas that follow them during political campaigns? Some of them three cups of rice, one cup of beans, and three hundred naira. And you see that they'll be, they'll be running around. That's one of the things that free things mentality used to do. They will insult you and you now have choice. Look at that verse 21. Look at that verse 21. Verse 21. In verse 21, look at me. And Jacob said unto the man, Give me my wife. I have paid. I should have access to what I have paid for. It is only beggars that don't have choice. People that love free things, they don't used to have choice. It is anything that lives present to them that they receive. Hello? Now, and do you know that it is the mentality of free things that makes people to behave like slaves? Please, love me. I If I go there, I will see this out. You know? Not because you want to help, but because you know that you will, they will give you either small meat or you now go, they will send you to the market. You will go, you are going to be the one to help them to wash their clothes. By the time they finish cooking, you will be the one to wash all the pots. The things that they are supposed to use Ketra to do, they will begin to use you to do. Do you know why? Free things mentality. That's what it turns people into. It, it turns them to slaves. See, I can see after my cast out of my heart now. I didn't hear you. The love for free things. Say it again. I cast out of my heart now. The love for free things. So I discovered that Jacob hated anything that is free. So let me ask you: Will you hate what is free now? Yes, because it will not allow you. To, if you love, if you love free things, you won't have choice. If you love free things, you won't have choice. But if you hate free things, have standard. So let's go to the one way for today. Now today what we are going to be looking at, we will learn from God's love towards Jacob. Now and why will, uh, we, will, we, will, we, will, we will be learning from God's love towards Jacob is so that we can learn what we stand to gain when we have a cordial relationship with God. That's why we want to study it. I want to show you what you will stand to gain when you have a cordial relationship with God. Because 
God and Jacob were close, I will show you the things Jacob gained. Now, let's go back to chapter 28. I want to bring something out from 28. Then we advance again. 28 from verse 12 to verse 17. Chapter 28, not verse 28. Chapter 28 from verse 12 to verse 17. Genesis 20. Look at this. Then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Next verse, please. We stop at 17. We are ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Verse 14, we stop at 17. I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the east and to the, and to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And in, in you, all, sorry, in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Verse 15, verse 15. Behold, I am with, with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I am with you. I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Pay attention to this. 16. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. 17. If I begin to explain. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gates of heaven. Now, what is the message that I saw here? You know, when Jacob was running away, he was going to Liban's house because he was afraid of what he saw him do. There was no dream. There was no vision. There was no anything. But because there was a relationship with God, I wrote here, God does not hide his purpose from those that love and serve him. I come again. God does not hide his purpose. I give him a two a don't don't fret, don't see. He does not hide, hide his purpose. One of the things you will gain as a child of God that loves God and that is serving God is that God will reveal His intentions to you. I told us when we started this uh, teaching on the first of November that there is no one on earth that is a mistake. Nobody is a mistake. Every one of us existing today, we are existing because God has a plan for our life. May we not miss his plan. Every plan of the devil to distract from the purpose of God shall continue to fail in Jesus' name. But can I tell you, if you pay attention well, God has a way by which he will reveal his plans for your life. Now, there are people that get his plans in several ways. I will show you as I go on in the teaching. This is one of the benefits of serving God. His will for your life will not be hidden from you. His will for your life, no, no, no matter how the devil plans it, God shows you that there is a will of God over everybody. And he cannot show us if we don't come to him. Now, do you know that it was here that Jacob saw that, hey, so I am, I'm going with the purpose. I am the one that will carry on the covenants that flowed from my father to his, you know, from his father to my own father. And now he's flowing to me because God said to him, I'm the God of your father Isaac, I'm the God of your grandfather Abraham. And this is what I've this your descendant shall be this, this, and this. Listen, if you want God to show you his plans and his purpose, like hear me, serve him more. Serve him more. I will show you three examples. Let's look at 2 Kings chapter 6, from verse 8 to verse 12. Look at God revealing his purpose to the king of Israel. Every single time the wicked makes a plan, God will show him. The Bible says, And the man of God sent to the king of Israel, saying, Beware that you do not pass this place, for the Syrians are coming down there. Next verse, we stop at uh, verse 12. And the, and the man of God sent to the king of Israel saying beware 
that you do not pass this place for the Syrians are coming down there then the king of Israel sent someone to the place of which the man of God had told him thus he warned him and he was watchful there not just once can you see not just once or twice can you see? every single time the Syrians make a plan God will go and show prophet Elijah 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 will go and tell the king go and the of hell God said I should tell you the Syrians are planning against you. Do you know the one that is blind? And it's your fortune in Noemi. And it's you sing along. It will be easy for you to fall into the trap of the enemy if you are not serving God. Now, look, let's read on. Let's finish. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing. And he called the servants and said to them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? I look back, but they fool me gone. Which of us is for the king of Israel? Verse 12. Which of us is for the king of Israel? Who is telling him our plans? And one of his servants said, None, my lord. O king, but Elijah the prophet, who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. Church, if, if, you, are, if you are sensitive enough, I'm telling you, God will show you everything in mind for you. He will even show you what the enemy, the wicked, is planning for you. That's one of the benefits of serving God. You know when we are telling people, come and serve God. Oh, he said, leave me. I don't want to serve God. That's why people fall into trap easily. In fact, there are people, ask my wife, she can testify to it. There are people who have disguised eh, to come close to us. You see that she will see it or I will see it. It may be in a vision of the night. God will just show up something. They will come by by the At times she will say, ah, this is the way. I'm just having this presence in my spirit to be careful with this person. And do you know that once we apply that principle, okay, let's be careful. Within a short space of time, that person will just manifest. So if a Christian is falling into traps, easily, can I tell you the truth? Let him run check his Christian life. I was sharing with one of our sons. There was a time he he was he became so desperate to stay in search of money, and he was just committing blunder. Ah, because I want to make money. There's this business on the internet. Because I want to make money. So when he lost one of a, a, a big one that time, I think some thousands, I had to sit him down. I said, I remember when you used to play very well. When every time, every single break time you have. You want to fast, you want to come on the altar to pray. That do you notice that all the people around your life are blessed to bless you? You know why the devil is after your relationship with God to break it? It's because he knows that once your relationship with God is broken, the first thing that will happen to you is that you become spiritually blind. Oh, the in Kotumboma. Look at one more scripture. Look at one more scripture. In Acts chapter 23. Acts 23 from verse 11 to verse 17. Acts 23. Look at how God revealed to Apostle Paul what some people were planning about him. Acts chapter 23 from verse 11 to 17. He said about the following night, the Lord stood by him and said, That's Paul. Be of good cheers, Paul. For as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must also be a witness at Rome because as at that time they arrested him and they were thinking of charging him to another country to another place for judgment God said don't worry you see all these things that is happening to you don't let it be strange to you God was saying to Paul it is my plan to use it as an opportunity to make you preach the gospel abroad can you see that Paul was aware of what God was doing now look, look up and when it was day some of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under an oath saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. We won't eat up, we won't drink up until we kill Paul. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. Until they kill Paul. Now, there were more there were more than how many? Forty who had formed this conspiracy, 40 men, they teamed up together. They came to the chief priest 
and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great oath that we will not eat, that we will eat nothing until we have killed Paul. We will eat anything until we kill him. Yes. Shagada was killed. Now, you therefore, together with the council, suggest to the commander that he be brought down tomorrow as though you were going to make further inquiries concerning him. But we are ready to kill him before he comes near. That was what the enemy were planning on. But look at how God revealed the secret. Because if you are serving God, nothing will be hidden from you. I'm waiting for verse 16. So when Paul's sister's son heard, can you see? This one Paul didn't see it in the vision. He didn't hear it by prophecy. But God planted somebody that will hear the information and take the information to Paul. You know, most times, wait for me here with this people. You know, at times some of you say, eh, eh, eh. But somebody went to tell Papa Jari, eh, it's because they went to tell him. He didn't hear. Did God speak to Paul that some people have, want to kill him here? But God planted somebody. Let's read that scripture again. God planted his sister's son. So when Paul's sister's son heard of their ambush, he went and entered the barracks and told Paul. Verse 17. Look at how Paul was saved. He told Paul, this is the plan. Then Paul called one of the centurions to him and said, take this young man to the commander, for he has something to tell him. And beloved, that was how he was rescued. I must tell you clearly, if you are a believer serving God genuinely, as a young person, you cannot marry no man, unless if you choose to be stubborn. To buy your money, you don't feel you walk and see your money to you talk. Who will she? If you buy your key, you look at my mad boy. I'm showing you benefits. God told Paul, Jacob, Jacob, see, this is what I will do with your life. spiritual eyes be open as you serve the Lord in Jesus name I don't hear if you pay attention well God will reveal his purpose to you when you serve him that's one of the benefits I saw that Jacob enjoyed God revealed to him ahead his plans ever before he got there let's look at number two number two Genesis 31 verse 24 Genesis 31 verse 24 second thing God will appear to your enemies by himself when you serve him in truth. God will appear to your enemies by himself when you serve him in truth. You know, some of you don't know that God at times, because you don't see anything happening around you, you think God is not fighting. Do you know that God can go to your enemies, reveal himself to them, and warn them because of you? Now look at Genesis 31 verse 24. God went to appear to Liban. Liban had it in mind. Look at this. But, but God had come to, Lib to Liban, the Syrian, in a dream by night. And what did God say? And said to him, Be careful that you speak to Jacob, neither good nor bad. And as at this time, see, Jacob was running away from Liban. He was running away from Liban. Ha! Ah, we know that Liban is a powerful man. But when you serve God, he fights for you. You can't serve God and he will not fight. Even Jacob, as at that time, did not know that God had gone ahead. Do you know that as you are seated now, some of the people you are afraid of have seen your God? I don't, I don't think you had me. Cherry, I want to be there. Hey, I want to shame me. I want come. I will show you. Let's see more scriptures. Now, show me verse 29. I'm also going to see verse, verse 42. When you serve God in truth, God has a way of defending you. Look at verse 29. It is in my power to do you harm. Who was speaking? Liban. But the God of your father spoke to me last night. Yay. Which means I, I have capacity to handle. It's my first capacity to 
That's why, as a child of God, I've been serving God, always walk in confidence. He said, but God spoke to me. No, 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 show me the scriptures. He said, but the God of your father spoke to me last night, saying, be careful that you speak to Jacob neither good nor bad. Which means if God had not appeared to uh, be bad, what would be bad? No. He, would have, he, would have, he would have harmed Jacob. Stop being afraid of the enemy. Stop thinking that God is not doing anything about the enemy. And if you see, God did not go to Jacob to tell him that, don't worry, Jacob will put him on the table. But he shall Now, see verse 42. Look at verse 42. Verse 42. Verse 42. Verse 42. Now, unless Jacob now says, hey, unless the God of my father Abraham and the fear of Isaac had been with me, surely now, what's going on? Surely now, show me scriptures now, surely now, you would have sent me away empty and dead. God have seen my affliction and the labor of my hands and did what? And rebuked you last night. You know, we used to quote this verse 22. He said, this verse 42 is the result of what God did in verse 24 and in verse, uh, uh, verse 29. God went to the enemy. In fact, when I was studying this scripture, the Lord said I should go and look at Judges chapter 7, verse 9 to verse 15. Do you know that when uh, Gideon was afraid, God told him, Gideon, you know what? Go and face the enemy. I've given them into your hands. You will conquer them. Gideon was afraid. But something happened. Let's look at it. Uh, Judges chapter 7. From verse 9 to verse 15. Judges chapter 7. From verse 9. It happened on the same night. That the Lord said to him. Arise. Go down against the camp. For I have delivered it into your hands. God was speaking to Gideon here. Go. I have delivered the enemy into your hands. But if you are afraid, look at God, to go down. Go down to the camp with Pura, your servant. Go down to the camp with Pura, your servant. Move on. And you will hear what they say. Afterward, your hands shall be strengthened to go down against the camp. Then he went down with Pura, his servant, to the outpost of the armed men who were in the camp. Verse 12. He went down. Yes. Now, the Midianites and Amalekites, all the people of the east, were lying in the valley as numerous as locusts, and their camels were brought, so were without number, as the sand of the seashores in the multitude. Yeah. And when Gideon had come there, had come, there was a man telling a dream. Look at this. He's got a gun ahead. There was a man telling a dream to his companion. He said, I, had, I have had a dream. To my surprise, a loaf of barley bread trampled into the camp of, the, of Midian. It came to a tent and struck it so that it fell and overturned and the tent collapsed. Verse 14. Then his companion answered and said, this is nothing else, oh, but the sword of Gideon. Can you see? They themselves got the dream. They themselves got the interpretation that, ah, this is the sword of Gideon, oh, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, into whose hand God had delivered Midian and the whole camp. But what was happening to Gideon? The room by Gideon. Show me the last verse. But they were, Gideon was afraid. Hey, 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 will I go? God said, go and listen. Just go to the camp, put your ears down, and you hear what they are saying. And so it was when Gideon had the telling of the dream and its interpretation that he worshipped. He returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise! For the Lord had delivered the camp of the Midian into, of Midian into your hand. Can you see? That your God knows how to threaten your enemies. You don't need to be afraid. 
Some of you don't know that if God has not revealed himself to them, hear me, they would have destroyed him. You want to come look with your own dark Some of us have been crying. Lord God arise. You think God is not doing anything? He's doing something. But the Bible says his ways are not our ways. I come again. His ways are not our ways. The way he does his things, they are different. Why are they different? He is God. He chooses his own way. So when you serve God, God knows how to appear, reveal himself to your enemies in order to create fear in their hearts so that they will not be able to tamper with you. There's one more I want to show you from another scripture from Matthew 27, verse 19. Matthew 27, verse 19. Matthew 27 verse 19 he talks about the wife of Pilate the Bible says we are Pontius Pilate was trying to say this man must be judged Matthew 27 19 yes while he was sitting on the judgment seat his wife sent to him and saying ha have nothing to do with this just man with that just man for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him So, beloved, when it comes to the issue of the enemy, if you know you are serving God, be confident. Your God is already handling your enemies. Am I communicating? Because some of you have allowed the fear of me. You are always afraid. Who knows what they are planning? Who knows what they are doing? I call one day. I'll share with one of our brothers. He will always come and tell me dreams. Daddy Mulala, what I mean of her. Daddy Mulala, can you come to the new no Kiribewa? Daddy Mulala, can you come to the new no Kiribewa? Daddy, he is always, anytime he comes to tell me dreams, no one day God just said to me, son, if you keep telling him the truth, he will listen to you. Anytime he tells you anything, just say you have had. Because I discovered that when I say, see, all these things you are saying is not real. He goes to prophets praying in prayer houses and when he goes to prayer houses he will tell him that you need to do three days fasting four days fasting seven days fasting so he was always coming to me with ulcer you see that you come you say when he's sick my one side of my stomach is paining me so when i ask him he will tell me he has been fa fasting over what he says daddy you don't understand you don't understand eh you don't understand the, there is a power in our house that doesn't allow people to prosper and I ask him, the people that owns the house that you are living, they are doing well abroad. From your own confession too, I have heard that the people don't even need your rent. They are so comfortable that they don't need. So if there is anything destroying destiny, he should destroy them. See, if you allow the fear of the enemy to saturate your heart, you won't live in the victory that Christ has for you. First John chapter 5 verse 4 says what? Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. What ginger did the spies when they got to Jericho? Let me ask you. Kilo ginger of our, our, our spies. They said, ah, we have heard in fact the whole city is afraid because of you because we have had what your God has done to other people we have had church hear me your testimony is already creating fear in the camp of the enemy you stop being afraid of the enemy I've shared this experience with you before I think I should be gradually summarizing with it. What was this experience? The church where I was raised. I was raised from this church where they where they do deliverance, deliverance, you know, they lay under you, you fall down, you roll on the floor, you say some things, you foam from the mount. That was the kind of church where I was raised. And beloved, every time the same sets of people were the people that always fall down, the same sets. 
let me bother. I, I remember in our church here too, there was a time too, we were doing that. Anytime we want to have worship songs, I had to call one of them. Why you always, I asked her, why are you always falling down? That there is no service we do that you will not fall down. Why? And I say, if you fall down, it's even good. But you're always breaking chairs. Your falling down does not pay us. It does not pay the church. Because that time, one plastic chair was 1,003. So imagine if she, if we do service of uh, uh, anointing service every Sunday, how uh, I many services uh, Sunday do we have in a month? Twenty-five. No, in a, in a year, fifty-two. Which means that person will break almost five dozen of chairs every Sunday. Five dozen sixty. We just remove eight. So our falling down will not be us. One thousand three. Times 52. So I noticed that after I said it, she stopped falling down. If you want to fall down, she will look at herself. <laughs> so, what am I telling you this story? My pastor someone taught us that see, if you eat in the dream, that is what is called demonic implantation. If you have sex in the dream, that's what they call demonic evil covenant that makes them to steal your glory. Says so many things, but do you know that as spiritual as I as I was that time, always fasting and praying, I was always eating the dream. When go to one man to the the day I finished, maybe seven days of fasting, that day that I said, "Praise God, I've concluded this fast. Thank you for victory. I will eat in the dream like mad." And once I finish eating, I'll just go. And sit down somewhere in the corner I'll be sober I'll say ah evil plantation in my life Then the Holy Spirit started ministering to my heart that son, do you believe I say I believe? Do you speak in tongues? I say I speak in tongues. Do you believe I say I believe? Do you stretch your hand and heal people at times? I say yes, I minister healing. He said, son, do you now believe that if you eat any deadly thing, it will not harm you? I said, yes, I believe. He said, then why, why do you believe? That whatsoever you eat in the dream will affect you in the natural. I said, Yes, I believe. The Lord now said to me, Son, every single time you wake up from a dream, where you eat in the dream, lift up your voice and cancel it, and that will be all. So the devil didn't know that I already had that revelation in my mind. After I fast, I ate that food in my dream and I woke up. When I woke up, I said, Lord, I thank you for the kind of food that I cannot afford in the physical. I thank you for enjoying enjoyed it. Everyone that contributed to us providing that food, ah, Lord, I appreciate them. And I believe that even if it is deadly thing, in the name of Jesus, it will not harm me. That when the devil now saw that after such dreams I no longer felt sad, I didn't know when they stopped because people were talking about the to the to the to the to the to the to 
blah. He said they they will they will take up serpents, and if they drink any dead anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Beloved, that was how the eating in the dream stopped. Because the devil now knew that it no longer afflicted me. I'm summarizing. Stop being afraid of your enemy. Man, be water, man. A lot of things say, "Could that get lonely or what?" In fact, what if I run home? And let's take the last one for tonight. Last one. I learned from Jacob that God indeed is a covenant fulfiller. When He promises you. He will definitely bring to manifestation what he has promised. Who is God? God is a covenant fulfiller. Let me ask you again. Who is God? God is a covenant fulfiller. He can never lie. If he gives you a promise, he will fulfill that promise. You know where I learned that from? It was when Jacob returned. The Bible says he got to Bethel. This was the place where I made a covenant with God. I'm back. I went empty. Look at me coming out. It's a covenant fulfiller. Any promise he gives you, hold on to that promise. God will bring to pass what he has said. Is somebody hearing me? Oh, to so who my moshe. If you want to tell you, tell you what you know, what you will. Most in the little food, I remember those days, ah, church, that I was trusting God for fruit of the womb, you know. And would you alone for Monday? I was sharing it. I went to a church to preach on Monday. So one of the pastors, some of the pastors that came to preach me, I know one of them that I've gotten married about two or three years ago. There's not yet a child in the house. And I was said to her, to him, I said, see, there was a time like that in my family. First three years of my marriage, there was no child in the house. But anytime I pray, God give me a child. You know what God give me children. You know what God gave me? He gave me names. Timothy Prikulu at John for me long and he came home coincident. And I wrote down the name. Ejo should draw out. Who that became man is sir, sir, a job, a job. Yeah, Papa, if we know who came and he knew what they had an open account.
I see you tying head gay. Is it head gay or head gay? I don't know what you call it. Give me the one I see you back. You give me head and Toby gone. I'm on his wedding. She was thinking that her death was that year. But the year came when her son got married. She invited everybody in church and she was tying the gay. And I remember, reminded her, can you see that God brought his promise to pass? Wait, and we don't know before. I'm saying it prophetically as God's servant. Your day will come that you will stand on this altar. That you will share your testimony and people will dance with you. Those of you trusting God for jobs, your day will come in the name of Jesus. Those of you trusting God for international open doors, for visas, your day will come that you will stand here to say praise the Lord. Struggling, ah, somebody's not saying the better. Ah.
remember when I went to be the foundation of the complex. It was sometimes this year. I think when Happy Mama any this year. Over your life, the promise of God will come to pass. Just I want you to trust God. That's what I'm telling you. This is a covenant.